Welcome, I'm Nina Griffin, and this is the Astrology and Magic channel. First, I wanted to thank my patrons for your amazing support and enthusiasm. Uh, if you would like to become a patron, please visit patreon.com slash Nina Griffin. Uh, through this, you will gain access to uh, videos early, and at the higher tiers, you will have access to exclusive videos uh, such as forecasts and transit deep dives that are not available to the general public. All right, today we'll talk about Mars and Aries in 2020, which I'm calling the big picture. This is the first in a series of videos about Mars and Aries because there's just so much to say, I just couldn't fit it all into one video. Let's get started. So Mars passage in Aries is going to last six months and approximately 10 days. He will enter Aries June 27th, 2020, and he will exit January 6th, 2021. That's quite a long time for Mars to be in just one sign. Now Mars will station retrograde September 9th, and this will happen at 28 Aries, and then he will station direct November 13th at 15 Aries. So these degrees and dates are going to be extra highlighted and extra potent, as well as eventful, when it comes to Mars' passage through this sign. So what does this all mean? Let's take a step back and let's talk about the symbolism of Mars in Aries. So Mars is the planet of war, force, and separation. His job is to bring people apart. He is all about breakups, if you will. Just as Venus is about bringing people together, Mars drives people to be separate and emphasizes the differences between people rather than their similarities and commonalities. Now, Mars in Aries is in his own sign, or domicile, and he is said to be better behaved when he is in his own sign than in other signs. But in a global context, when it comes to events that affect us all, it just means that his effects are more in your face and noticeable. A planet in its own sign is going to be a pure manifestation of that planet's energy. Now, Mars in Aries also emphasizes the nature of Aries. Aries, as you know, is a cardinal fire sign and historically was called one of the bestial signs. So it has a tendency to act as a wild beast without really rationality or, uh, you know, a room for dialogue. Mars in Aries is very much determined to get his way without really thinking about how to do it, other than kind of immediate tactics. Aries represents a gloves-off, no-holds-barred kind of fighting. It's a very fast-moving style of combat. Mars in Aries is going to bring explosions, metaphorical and literal. If you think of Sagittarius as ruling projectile weapons because of Sagittarius's bow and arrow, Mars rules dynamite. This is literally just the stuff that makes things go boom. So the narrative of Mars for the rest of 2020, though, will be one of attempted storming of the castle and frustration. Especially in Aries, Mars likes to move fast and break things to achieve his goals, or sometimes just for the fun of it. But he will go retrograde for about two months, which is not very effective for going fast, or going where he's going. It's making him go backwards. So Mars and Aries wants to go forward and he wants to get there quickly, but this is not going to be really possible for him for much of 2020. While he is in Aries, he will also run into the other three planets that are in Capricorn. That's going to be Jupiter, Saturn, and of course Pluto. All of these planets are really better positioned to come away winners. If you think of the square from Mars as an opportunity for conflict, you can see which planet is going to win based on which planet is superior or overcoming, as we say, as well as which one is better positioned by sign. Between Mars and Jupiter, Mars is better positioned by sign, although Jupiter overcomes. And between Mars and Saturn, as I explained in my Mars and Saturn video, as Saturn is much, much better positioned and, frankly, is going to kind of crush Mars sooner or later. Mars, of course, will also square Pluto, and I can't imagine that goes super well for Mars. So the thing to remember 
If you think back just a few months to earlier this year, we had four planets passing through Capricorn at around the same time. That was Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, and of course Pluto. We didn't get a complete and perfect conjunction all happening in Capricorn at the same time, but this period of time, January and March and early April, was really the period during which COVID-19 became a worldwide pandemic. So as I call this in my other video about Mars square Saturn, we can think of these degrees that were activated by Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, and Pluto getting close to one another. We can think of them as a zombie aspect, although those aspects have all separated and dissolved. When you get another transit, like Mars, for example, in Aries, squaring these same degrees, they get to be reactivated. They come back to life, just like zombies. So one very obvious link then would be that as Mars passes through Aries, we could see a resurgence of COVID-19, at least in some locations, perhaps ones that didn't do a very good job of controlling it early on. So a lot of people have been talking about a potential second wave and if we do see that, I think that would happen earlier than a lot of people think. I would expect that to occur in August, and then again in late September and early to mid-October. We will also see major power struggles for the rest of 2020, but they will result in not exactly a truce, but one party will definitely win and another will definitely lose. Whoever identifies with Mars and Aries will be the loser ultimately, and we will see that as 2021 starts, really. Now, the activities that were going on, just to remind you, earlier this year, as all of this stuff was happening in Capricorn, were the Hong Kong protests against mainland China, and also we had the U.S. impeachment uh, decision and proceedings going on. So I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of related activity was taking place, kind of, again, being brought back to life this second half of 2020. So again, we could see a lot more activity going on in Hong Kong, and we could also see a lot more going on with the U.S. presidency, the House, and the Senate. A lot of questions being raised about the abuse of power, what's appropriate behavior, and of course, a lot of power broker activity going on in the background. I also expect to see oil price volatility the rest of this year. This to me is more linked to Saturn returning to Capricorn uh, because he does rule oil, traditionally speaking, particularly when he passes through Capricorn, an earth sign. However, Saturn's passage through Capricorn is going to be aggravated by volatile Mars squaring Saturn. Finally, we will also see likely earthquakes and explosions and air disasters. Usually things that are very um, volatile, such as jet fuel, uh, burn very easily and explode very easily. And so Mars in Aries has a tendency to bring about disasters that involve uh, airplanes exploding or airplanes crashing, things like that. So be aware of, of that occurring in the next few months as well. So let's talk about some of the key dates of Mars passage through Aries. As I explained, there are going to be two sets of aspects that he will make. These will be aspects to Jupiter, Saturn, and Pluto, a square, and he will make one pass through them in August as he squares them, then he retrogrades, and then he aspects them again as he goes retrograde and squares these three planets. Now, in addition to this, he's going to essentially revivify the degrees that were activated uh, in Capricorn earlier this year. So first I wanted to mention Mars square Jupiter. I think we're going to see all of these aspects as a whole. I don't think they're necessarily going to be separate and discrete events. That's why I think of them as clusters. There's going to be that August cluster. And in August, it starts with August 4th at 19 Aries and 19 Capricorn as Mars direct squares Jupiter retrograde. Here, Mars could get an early advantage against Jupiter. Jupiter is still in his fall and Jupiter is retrograde. So we could see, you know, legal challenges and conflict around money, the economy and wealthy people, all of whom are ruled by Jupiter. Then August 13th, Mars will square Pluto 
which of course will give us the usual violence, power plays, all those nasty things that are just really amplified by Mars that typically belong to Pluto. August 24th will be Mars square Saturn, and there's a whole video and actually a series of videos just on the Mars square Saturn aspect because I believe it's going to be so powerful and so descriptive of what happens the rest of this year. This is going to be a very frustrating encounter for Mars, who will not be able to get very far against Saturn. Again, as Saturn will be retrograde in August, Mars might be able to score some points off of Saturn, but it's really more a case of winning an initial battle rather than winning the entire war. So then, of course, Mars is going to go retrograde, and then he will pass again. Uh, the same way he's going to square all these planets. The difference is the second time around, Mars is going to be retrograde and all these planets will be direct. So the balance of power and the balance, the strategic advantage will have shifted quite dramatically. And poor Mars might not be totally aware that things have just changed under his feet. So October, uh, actually it starts September 29th, 2020, and that will be Mars square Saturn. That will be at 25 Aries, 25 Capricorn. Again, this is going to be, I think, a very frustrating moment for Mars. I am very curious to see how this one plays out. October 9th, we get Mars square Pluto, which again, we get violence and power plays. Mars is at a disadvantage. Pluto is in an advantage. This, again, does not seem to bode very well for whatever Mars represents. And then October 18th will be that last aspect, which will be Mars square Jupiter, at 19 Aries, 19 Capricorn. So that was very abstract, I recognize. So let's talk about how that could manifest at a very high level, global kind of level. So remember that Mars tries to blast his way through obstacles, right? Now in the Mars Saturn square videos, I focus on this particular aspect of Mars. But in reality, as I explained, he will need to go not only to Saturn, but also Jupiter. And if you use outer planets, Pluto as well. So Mars is going to be severely outgunned this year, really. But Mars being Mars, he doesn't know it. That's the nature of Mars in Aries. He will keep trying to fight it. And he's just going to be completely caught unaware and flat-footed when he's retrograde. And suddenly, all of these powerful forces are going to be arrayed against him starting in late September and then through October. Now, Mars rules all groups of people who carry weapons as part of their occupation. We're talking about military, the police, but also criminals, terrorists, and any paramilitary or guerrilla groups. He also rules doctors, nurses, and chefs, anyone who works with sharp objects or heat. So my expectation is that these groups in particular will have a hard time the rest of this year, deservingly or not. Interestingly, all of these groups have already been severely impacted by COVID-19, either by being infected or by working with people who are, such as the healthcare workers. In addition, the movement in the U.S. and abroad to stop police violence will likely have social and economic impacts on police forces. So my prediction is that because of this Mars and Aries transit where we'll see for six months, all of these professions and groups will find themselves transformed to some extent by the time Mars leaves Aries at the very beginning of 2021. So what this tells us is that Mars and Aries is going to be an opportunity for positive change, but it's also going to be very difficult for all of these Mars professions and groups and people don't forget that Mars also rules people who want to make change, any kind of a populist movement, anybody that styles themselves as a challenger to the status quo. They might, like I said, they might find early victories in August or thereabouts, but they're going to come up against some very difficult challenges in September and October. And again, it'll be fascinating to watch as they will have to change their strategy and change, in fact, many of them their entire worldview uh, in order to survive, if they have any hope of surviving. It'll be, again, fascinating year. I guess that's what you call living in interesting times. All right, more later in future videos, including the impact of Mars and Aries on the individual birth chart. My name is Nina Griffin, and thank you for watching.